Steve. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, so I've got a few questions for you today. So, how do you feel about being part of such a major event like the Olympics that inspire many young people today? Oh, you know, it was my dream as a, as a child growing up to go to the Olympic Games. So to get the, the opportunity to go and compete there was just a dream come true. It's fantastic. It really is everything you could perceive it to be. Scary, intimidating, um, exciting, exhilarating. Uh, but what an, it's an amazing opportunity and one that you have to, to grab if you, if you get the chance. Has the Olympics changed you as a person? Um, I think all our life experiences change us in some way or another. Or another. Um, I, I think, y yes, it probably has for all sorts of reasons. Uh, it's a good question, by the way. I like that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's more, I think, around you can have whatever you want. And I, one of my messages, I always tell people, you can, whatever your dream is, if you want it enough and you believe in yourself, you can go get it. That's my biggest takeaway. So, do you have a saying or motto that inspires you when you train? Um, that inspires me when I'm training. I, I think it, it goes back to that, you know, this is possible kind of, kind of chat. I, I genuinely believe that we've all got a huge potential. And, and that we, we actually, through one, one reason or another, we don't get to tap into it enough. And I really genuinely believe that we've got to inspire ourselves. So I, I tend my, to, to answer the question, I'd want to inspire myself. Like, come on, you can do it. You can do it. You know, it's a, it's a, um, you know, inspiring yourself and good internal chat is essential. Do you have a particular athlete that inspires you? Uh, I did growing up, athletes that you, you've probably never heard of, but, um, um, you know, actually, well, one you might have is Sebastian Coe, who's now, yeah. you know, he's led the London 2012, but he was a great athlete when, he, when I was growing up, Steve Ovet. Nowadays, though, it's probably more Usain Bolt and Mo Farah and Jessica Ennis Hill, you know, the, the athletes of today. Who are, I, I think, the, and, the, and the reason for that is they're not only athletes who deliver once, but they can do it again and again. That's, that's the bit that I kind of respect more than anything else. Obviously, you're an athlete that has delivered many times because you have multiple Olympic medals. So how does it feel to be the only British track and field competitor to win medals at three different Olympic Games? Oh, you're good. You've done your research, haven't you? Uh, that, look, that, that's um, a huge honour, a huge privilege. I was a bit disappointed because I came fourth in my fourth one as well. So I was a bit disappointed I didn't get four in a row. Um, well, that's, that's being greedy. Um, the, the truth is actually, I, 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 that is a true, a true fact, but it can change this year because Christina Hurugu has two, so she might also have three this year if she can medal in Rio. Um, but as it stands, yeah, look, it's, it's great. And there is something in that sustaining success because doing it once is fun. Going back and, and reinventing and re-inspiring yourself is, is when it really starts to matter. So, what is the main highlight of your career? Because obviously, winning the medals is a very, very big thing. But do you have anything else? Um, well, other than the medals stuff. Oh, look! I think that's the thing with sport is it gives you opportunities to do things, um, and, and that's a bit of a challenge actually is balancing that. So, to do, you know, Saturday morning television, to do all the prime time TV, do the chat shows, get involved in all that stuff, go on reality television. I did Dancing on Ice. Um, cooking shows, you know, and all this crazy stuff. It's, you know, I think that's the, the wonderful thing about sport is is, is it gives you opportunities, um, or success in sport gives you opportunities. So I was I was very privileged and, and thankful that I was able to to do a few of them, um, and maybe a few more to come. I don't know. Saturday morning television is something that we all tune into. <laughs> so what is your favourite programme that you have been on apart from Dancing on Ice, which you clearly really really enjoy? <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't enjoy it, by the way. I, I was too scared. I was too scared. I, I, was, I was rubbish at it. Um, which one did I enjoy the most? Um, do you know, I like the cooking shows. I like watching MasterChef. I've never done MasterChef. I've done the other ones. I'm Ready Steady and Britain's Best Dish and all these different things. Um, but I, I, I think one of the cooking shows of just learning a new skill whilst you're under pressure, um, there's something fun about that. Do you cook at home? Yes, I love cooking. I love cooking. So you're going to see yourself on MasterChef in a few years <laughs> in front of Greg and John? <laughs> Possibly. You never know. I'd love to. Yeah, I, I think, like I say, you know, learning a new skill is brilliant. And the MasterChef, because it's a process, you'd have to learn lots of, you know, lots of new skills.
And uh, yeah, they're a bit scary though, aren't they? Greg and John, you're breathing down your neck while you're trying to sort of get things straight. Um, even, the, even the guys who can do it look scared. But I'd love to do that. Greg likes sweet food more. Oh, okay. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you. What impact did being a javelin thrower have on your life? Um, I suppose it's, it's everything. It's maybe who I am today because I haven't done anything else. You know, so that, that's what I did. You know, I was um, successful at kind of 20 years of age. Uh, so I went pretty much straight from school. I had one, two years at university before my career kicked off. It's all I've ever known is competing, striving to compete at the Olympic Games, the World Champs, the European Champs, the Commonwealth Games, winning medals. I was fortunate enough to break the world record. Um, so it's kind of all I know. So, you know, that's, it's hard to know anything different. Who would I have been if I hadn't have done that kind of thing? Because that's obviously what you're known for. Yeah, I, I, yeah hopefully not dancing on ice. <laughs> uh, that's, I'll, I'll stick with that. <laughs> so, obviously, a few years, like, near the end of your career, you did have a knee injury. So, how did the knee injury hold you back? Did it make you feel really bad that you couldn't carry on competing? Or did you think that, actually, that's just a phase in Do you know, the athletes, one of the, one of the biggest things, actually, is, is injuries. You, know, I, you, know, you mentioned a knee, there was also Achilles. I've had a hip replacement since I stopped competing. I'm a metal hip now. The, there's a big consequence to, to, you know, making sport your job, and that, and that is the, you know, you are going to get hurt. It is an inevitable consequence of training twice a day, you know, trying, pushing to try and be the best in the world. It's an audacious goal, and one that has consequences, as I say. So, you know, I, I just accept that stuff happened. It came along, and it was a matter of just dealing with it. You know, dealing with whatever it threw at, at me. And it, there was never any disappointment because I, I got, I'll tell you one, one thing, I got to finish on my terms. A lot of athletes have to actually stop competing because they're too, too injured to, to continue. And I wasn't one of them. I, I, I walked away because I chose to stop. So you decided to do javelin throwing to when you wanted to stop and you basically did what you loved for your career, which is something that many people do want to do, but it's difficult nowadays to do things you enjoy because obviously like is some opportunities, not everybody gets them, but the Olympics, how does it give everybody an equal opportunity in oh, sport? Okay. Can I, there's two bits in that. So one, one to, on your first point. So I believe that everyone should follow their passion. How they do it is another thing. See, my passion was the Olympics and the javelin was the vehicle that would allow me to, for that to unfold. Being the best in the world was an aspiration. It didn't have to be javelin throwing. Javelin, I just, that suited my physical shape, if, if you get my point. So, and I think it's a really important one. Um, you know, there's a famous story about the, the man who, you know, he cleans, cleans the toilets in NASA. And someone said to him, what's your job? And he said, I, I, I help put ma man on the moon. That's his job, because he is part of the team that makes that happen. And I think it's really clear to have a big dream and know why we're doing what we're doing. You know, you're not just an accountant or just a lawyer or just a doctor. You save people's lives, you improve people's lives. You know, it's that aspirational part of who we really are that's important to get first. Who do we want to be? I want to be a doctor when I grow up. Okay. Um, so what's what's the reason for that? What's, what's I mean, I want to be a doctor because I want to save people's lives and yeah. I also want to make everybody be able to live life to the fullest because I'm somebody who loves travelling and obviously you can't travel unless you're healthy. There you go. So whenever, if, 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 you know, and I know you will make that dream come true. Um, I, I know you will. When you get there, someone asks you what you do. I save people's lives. You know, someone who's, I'm a doctor. I think so many people are almost apologetic um, for what they do, especially bankers nowadays. That's another story. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, exactly. but being apologetic for what you do, I think, is, is so degrading. And, and no, no one should be. And the doctor's an obvious one, but uh, uh, we all have huge value. And I think that's a really important one. The Olympics is obvious. It's really obvious because it's, you know, it's so inspirational with medals and anthems. And, you know, it's, it's emotional. Um, but, that, you know, as Seb said in his opening ceremony, you know, the, the Olympics epitomizes everything that matters in life. And I think that's a true statement. 
you do something that you really enjoy and you've clearly got the motivation. Your motivation was to be world champion and that is very, very good. And to conclude, so what advice would you give to aspiring athletes? Because obviously there are many young people who do want to be in the Olympics because I've got some friends that want to be in the Olympics. What advice would you give to them? Okay, so do you want a long answer or a short answer? Any that you would prefer to give? I'll give a, a brief one and then I'll elaborate if it's time. Find your passion. Believe that you can. Have clarity. Know exactly what it is you want. Get good people around you. Really important. And just go do it. Don't sit around. Absolutely take action. Those five bits of advice there. Yeah. <laughs> Some inspirational words from Steve Backley there. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. A pleasure talking to you. Thank you. you too.